Greetings, men. Welcome to Building Men, Ministry of Iron Sharpens Iron. I'm Brian Duell. I'm with Rex Tignor, Thomas McMillan, and Todd Wagner. Todd's our special guest. He's out of Dallas. Uh, Todd's got uh, years of experience here in Dallas, but right now he's leading uh, the 1613 Project, which aims to build a coalition of courageous leaders across multiple spheres of influence committed to standing firm in the faith, which is what 1 Corinthians 16, verse 13 is all about. So greetings. Hey, Todd, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, it's a privilege to be with you, man, and with those that are listening. Thank you. You know, you mentioned that you've uh, launched five of your six kids. You know, that's a big part of being a man is launching kids. Now you got this uh, ministry, Two Men, Through Men. Tell us a little bit about what it means to be launching 1613. Well, you know, Brian, as you and I were just visiting a little bit uh, earlier, uh, you know, I, 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 to be honest with you, I mean, it's, it's not just to men, although I do think men are incredibly important. OK. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, we, we, we agree that like when leaders get better, everybody gets better. And there is no question about the, the biblical clarity of the role that God wants men to play. And so a lot of the leaders, uh, most of the leaders uh, that I, I work with, I mean, frankly, all of them right now are men, but I want to make sure that, you know, that, that, that I, I, um, am always mindful of the fact that, you know, the Lord, frankly, the reason that, that there's, there's so many gals that are rising up right now is because they're looking around, like if the men aren't going to do something, I'm going to, but, but I couldn't agree more. So let me just say 16, 13 project is not as men centric possibly as, as, um, building men is, but but it should be, and it, and it frankly is in practicality. I just say all that because it's interesting. You know, 1613 Project comes from 1 Corinthians 16, 13, as you said, but I call it the 1613 Project. We'll get into why in just a little bit. And when I when I memorized 1613 Project, it was the very first verse I taught my boys as they were growing up. Hmm. Uh, and and in the way that, you know, the New American Standard is, is the, the Bible that, um, you know, I read and memorize out of. And it says specifically in there to act like men, right? right? Yeah, and cool. uh, whereas the ESV and NIV and others just say act courageously. Mm. And there's something to be learned there about why the NAS scholars felt like uh, this idea of courage should be unique to men. And mm. it's a good word study, okay? But uh, but we do. We need godly men and women, you know, to uh, all play their role and uh, and, and doing what they should. And I, and I, I believe, you know, let me just say this and then we'll go back, uh, and maybe restart even my answer, but I absolutely believe that the, one of the biggest problems in America today, the biggest problem in America today is, is the, is the dead and the feckless church. And I believe it's because so many men and women believe that what God wants for them is to be regular attenders at a corporate worship service, as opposed to individuals that are, um, themselves, ministering in, in, in the places that God has them. Right? right. And, and so if, you know, one of the things that I'm doing now is rather than getting people to join the 1613 project is telling people, Hey, my life project. Okay. Uh, you know, Paul said in, in Colossians chapter one, we, we proclaim it, admonishing every man and teaching every man in order that we might, comp you know, present every man complete in Christ for this purpose. I labor. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I have always labored this way since the grace of God's been on me. But, but specifically, I want to go where you are and not pull you out to attend my church, right? Mm -hmm. But to help you to tend the business that God's church is supposed to be doing where they are. Mm -hmm. So whether that's in entertainment or arts or media, or government, or in the pulpit, mm -hmm. okay? If you are not firm in the faith, if you are not acting courageously, if you're not strong— and then really 14 is so important too. If you're not letting all you do be done in love, mm -hmm. then we're not going to be the salt and light that God wants us to be. So that's the heart behind the 1613 project. I can talk to you more about the name, but frankly, it's it's just the mission of the church. Okay. Right. That, that that's that's what you know, what's iron sharp and iron? It's the mission of godly men. And right. so we put these little labels on them, right? Uh, whether it's better men, promise keepers, 1613 project, you know, building men just to help people, you know, start a conversation, but all of us are doing the exact same thing. We're, we're paraphrasing some aspect of the great commission mm -hmm. that God's called us to and helping people understand this is how we're going about trying to accomplish it. Right. It's good. It's good. You know, I think of, uh, when we think about, uh, ministry in the church, through the church, outside the church, 
uh, we've been talking to guys about ministry to men, but really a lot of what we do is ministry through men. So it's again, back to this idea of we're building men with, we call it with others in mind. It's with others in mind. And it, obviously there's a place where that starts. You mentioned, you know, marriage, you got six kids, but right? there's a starting place. There's a priority, but then it goes beyond that. It goes to your faith community. It goes to your community, the greater Dallas, Metro Dallas community. So, but that requires discipling men, investing in men, reproducing your life. So tell us a little bit about how that will, what that looks like for your project 1613 as far as reproducing Todd into the lives of other men. Well, uh, yeah, and I, I know what you mean when you say Todd. Hopefully Todd, right, is 1 Corinthians 11, 1. Imitate me as right. I imitate Jesus exactly. Christ, right? And I know I know you meant that. But, you know, um, one of the things that's just true of strong leaders is that people think that you're trying to invest you in other men. Hmm. And, and you know, I, I've, I've been working my whole Christian life to decrease that Christ might increase, you know. And and so uh, hopefully it's less of me and more of Jesus. Now, that now being said, you know, Bartholomew and um and and john and james and james the lesser and philip they, they were all very different personalities i mean you read james it's different than reading a lot of the you know, pastoral epistles of paul and you read peter it's different still because god uses each of our unique personalities obviously informed by and yielded to the holy spirit to accomplish what he wants with our unique stewardship of life in the kingdom but what i try and do okay the best definition i've ever heard of of what the job of a disciple maker is is by um Gosh, is it, I think it's William Hendrickson, not not Walt. It's William Hendrickson who wrote uh, "Disciples Are Made, Not Born," mm -hmm. and and he I, I really like what he says in there, which is that um, discipleship is being with people you love while you have on your heart what's on the heart of God. Mm -hmm. Okay, wow. and good. and so you know when I'm with men, okay. Um, you know, I, I like I told you, the 1613 project, just because that flows off the tongue a little bit in the 1613-14 project, is really, you know, I always quote 14 like it's part of 13. And uh, and and just, you know, try and make the case that, that the, the verse was numbered differently. I, I wish those, those five things were together and not separated by a verse. But if I'm not, if, if, if love isn't my motivation, you know, then I'm a, I'm a, you know, a, a glanging, um, a, a clanging uh, gong and a noisy cymbal, you know. And so when I'm with these men, my job is to love them, which means sometimes to speak the truth, right? When iron, I always tell guys, I love the name of your ministry because like when iron sharpens iron, we kind of, we kind of think of that as a, a real spurring on. But if, if iron had nerves and mouths, okay, <laughs> when iron sharpens iron, there'd be a lot of screaming and yelling, right? When, when chunks of, you know, iron, or in our case, our flesh is falling off. It's not always an easy process. So right. love doesn't just mean this kid glove, um, you know, weak, tepid thing that the world way too often means that it is. Love is very, very strong. Love doesn't rejoice in unrighteousness, right? <laughs> but rejoices always with the truth. And so, you know, when you're with men and you're loving them, sometimes you're saying really hard things, mm -hmm. okay? But you, the, the motivation is I want what's best for you. Obviously. Right. So, so I, I I try and be with guys. Well, my motivation is to love them, and this is key. While I have in my heart, you know, what's on the heart of God. Mm -hmm. So I'm not advancing my agenda. I'm trying to say, hey, what's God's agenda in this individual? I was with a group of men yesterday that I pour into uh, on Mondays. You know, about forty guys, and I was just telling them, you know, hey, man, look, we're not even going to go back to where we were in Luke I, I, because I, I want you guys to know mm. that I want to remind you that the reason I'm spending time with you is not so that more people come to this particular Monday morning Bible study, but because of who you are. And, and I, and we just spent the entire time. I felt like that group really need to go back with me to second Corinthians chapter five. I need to remind them that they are Christ's ambassadors, mm -hmm. right? They are ministers of reconciliation. They're not men that attend a Bible study, right? They're not men taking notes, learning um, facts about uh, the Babylonian, you know, exile period. The, these, these are men that God expects today, right, to be a means of grace and goodness and be ministers of reconciliation in a world that is separated from God, in, in bondage to, to, to sin and death, destined for eternal judgment. And yeah. if all they do is listen to this nice little Bible study and come back again and, and don't cave to gross personal sin, 
while that's always a good idea to not cave to gross personal sin, they have fallen well short of what God intends from them. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, to use just a graphic analogy, I mean, you know, when you when you're working with a military, our goal is not that they wouldn't kill each other or kill themselves. All right. The goal mm -hmm. is that they would go out and 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 protect good and prosecute evil. Okay. Mm -hmm. So hey, thumbs up if you're not discharging the weapon directed at yourself. But yeah. but th yeah. there's so much more. Okay. That's that's not why you're in the military. We didn't issue this this opportunity to you so you wouldn't be self-destructive. But we're trying to build you up so you can be others protective and right. and, and 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 a minister of the gospel yep. and a, a source of good to other people. So so Todd, you were talking about discipleship and everything else. You know, sometimes discipleship the church makes it so hard. And it sounds like that you have found a way to make it simple. Um, kind of walk us through kind of something about how guys on this podcast that want to disciple other guys, how can they make it simple? Yeah. Well, listen, I mean, Jesus, uh, here's the way you make it simple. Okay. First of all, it is simple. It's just not easy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sanctification is hard work. Yep. And, and that's why, uh, you know, Paul tells us, to uh, to work out our salvation with fear and trembling because so much is at stake and and that's why he tells us to not grow weary in doing good um and 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 so because it is hard but it's simple okay and again i'm just going to go back I, I think hendrickson's definition is really good okay and 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 the problem with most men is that a they don't really know that 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 god wants more from them than just attending honestly religious meetings he Amen. wants them to be people who live in a relationship with Jesus. And because they live in a relationship with Jesus, they're fishers of men the way Jesus was fishers of men. They're, they're concerned about spiritual formation the way Jesus is concerned about spiritual formation. They set their mind on the things above, not the things on the earth, the way Jesus set his mind on the things above, not mm -hmm. the things on the earth. Okay. Paul says this in Philippians 4 9 the things you have learned and received, heard and seen in me, practice these things. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mark chapter 3, verse 13. Jesus says, um, you know, he was up all night praying. And then it says, this is so key. And this is, this is answering specifically your question, Rex. Um, it, it says Jesus prayed and then he called men to be with him. Absolutely. It doesn't say to listen to him. It doesn't say to learn from him. It says to be with him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that's what discipleship is. That's why I tell, I tell dads all the time, you know, and, and, and that, that the, the the most important discipleship program Todd Wagner has ever entered into is the six biological children, you know, or, and and then we 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 also had other kids we brought into our home mm -hmm. uh, through mentorship and other relationships, and, and my kids have been in foster care relationships and things like that. But is when I bring somebody to my home for eighteen years, okay, you know, uh, if if that if there is not an intensive discipleship program, so formal family devotions weren't a regular practice at our house. Mm -hmm. Okay, but constant discipleship was yes, um, which is really Deuteronomy six six through nine. Yes. Okay. When you walk by the way, when you sit, when you lie down, when you get up, I mean, it's like all the time. So discipleship mm -hmm. is is having a, a, a just understanding. Okay, that as we're together, I mean, listen, our conversation today. As soon as I shut up, you know, we're gonna we're 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 encouraging discipling and, and reminding each other right i mean right. we wouldn't say that we're discipling one another but when we're together we are right now i mean this is iron sharpening iron four ways and the guys that are with us in this podcast and and this in this video stream hopefully some of what we're doing is is going to is going to spur them on and so Amen. that's really what discipleship is Amen. Todd, a follow up question to what rex asked i like to see if you can hone in on on something you know, the name of our broadcast, the name of our podcast is Building Men. So we do have a lot of men who we hopefully are out there who want to build men. So what would you share with us about things we can do intentionally to move men from being a regular attender to someone who's fully engaged in their purpose? So one of the two, what are the one or two things we should be focused on in, in regards to teaching or even activity that will get men closer to purpose? Instead of just, well, I mean, it starts with leadership. I mean, again, uh, Brian, you know, I, 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 I the, the way I, I always say is like when a leader gets better, everyone gets better. I think you said something specific to men. How'd you say it, Brian, earlier in our, our conversation right before we got started? Do you remember? We, we, we work through men 
you yeah. know, to, to reach others. Do you remember what you said, though, around that? Well, I, I talk about building men with others in mind. There we go. I love that. Okay, so you're building men with others in mind. Um, I, I, I'll just tell you, you know, Thomas, I, I think the problem is with pastors. The problem is mm-hmm. specifically with spiritual leaderships. They're building churches with growing their churches in mind, not growing men. <laughs> That's and, and, and I really mean that. I, 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 you know, I wrote a book called Come and See, which um, – talks about um, the, the the deal that most pastors cut. And here's the deal that most pastors cut. You come here, you validate me with your presence, right? You invite more of your friends so that my pastor friends think I'm a big deal because all of these people come. You give me enough money to keep the lights on and I won't ask too much of you. Mm-hmm. And we'll both tell each other we're doing what God wants us to do. Okay. <laughs> even, even, even in Bible believing churches, a lot of times what pastors do would go, Hey, I'm preaching the word. And listen, you better preach the word, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you better have a, a, a prophetic, strong pulpit. But but at the end of the day, you better also be, you better know well the condition of your flocks because you're going to even account for those souls, Hebrews 13 says. Mm-hmm. Okay? And so that means you got to know those individual members. You got to know where they're stuck. You got to know um, what they're doing, what the next step in spiritual formation is. And I can't tell you how many churches have such a loose or perverted form of membership that that uh, it really is just to track giving and attendance and not spiritual formation, mm-hmm. okay? And it drives me crazy. And not just me. I mean, heck with Todd Wagner. Go read Ezekiel 34 and, and pay attention to who else that drives crazy. Right, yeah. Okay, okay? <laughs> because, you know, Ezekiel 34 is, is Jesus just saying, I've got a problem with the shepherds of Israel and, and uh, you're making yourself fat, if you will, off the flock that you're supposed to give your life for. Mm. And so he says, I'm going to bring severe judgment on you that I'm going to become. This is why Jesus, Ezekiel 34 is one of the reasons Jesus identifies himself in John 10 as the good shepherd, right? Mm. Who gives his life for the sheep. And too many pastors are giving their life for something more than sheep. It's, it's, it's for building a, uh, you know, uh, something other than men. Let me just say it that way. Yeah. Well, it's been my experience that, if you have, you know, whatever your role is in the body of Christ, if you have not been discipled, it's hard to get your hands around what it means yeah. to disciple. So you kind of come, you're kind of looking for that. I, I, I came to Christ at 19 through the ministry of the Navigators, and I had men who discipled me, who invested. I mean, I, I knew nothing. I was not special, but I had individual men who spent individual personal time with me. They invested deep into my life. Now, at the time, I thought that was going on everywhere. Mm. And I, gra- I, gra- I graduated from college. I, I got into the marketplace and I kind of go, uh-oh, there's nothing going on here. So I had you know, kind of this eye-opening experience. And so then you deep dive. You take what uh, my, my view of my life is I steward what's happened to me. I just reproduce it reproduce it and I do and, and the men that I reproduce it and I encourage them, I instruct them, I model for them that they do the same so that we've got this reproducing ministry. But again, extending grace to people who have not been discipled, they read about it in the scripture, they kind of see it played out, they understand, you know, Second Timothy 2, 2, etc. But they really haven't touched it. They haven't tasted it. They don't know what it's like for another man like Todd or Thomas or Rex to invest deep into mm. their life. So yeah. that's partly what we want to talk about this, that you can do this. You can reproduce your life. You simply choose a man. We, we use this uh, acronym, Faithful, Available, Teachable, Fat, you know, because when I find a fat man, then I'm, I'm partnering with God. God's already got that man's attention. He's mm-hmm. already working in him. I just simply come alongside, come and see, and I invest in that man who's ready. But I don't invest in everybody because not everybody's ready. Some people well, just want to show up. Yeah, what you do, Brian, is, is, you, is you do what Jesus did. You say, follow me. So let me let me just say a couple of things that you said. But, you know, just echo, uh, you know, some of what you're saying is so good. I, I've used that same acronym, right? I said, if you're fat, I'll put you on a diet. And this is, this is what I mean by that. If you're faithful, available, and teachable, teachable then I will disciple you. Okay, the word disciple is the, the, the word that means learn. I will help you learn, okay? Mm-hmm. Because I want to teach this to faithful men who will teach others also. Second, I will be intimate with you, all right? 
I'm going to pour into you. I'm going to encourage you, okay? And I'm going to spend time with you. So that's, if you're fat, I'll put you on a diet, all right? And uh, and and so, but but it's going to be, you're following me, all right? right. And, 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 and what you said, Brian, when you went through the list of what you do when you're with men, because this is what, this is the, the biggest problem, even with, I think, men that have a really good heart. When most of us think of discipleship, we stop at book learning. Yeah. Come to, come to the Bible study, get your Bible open, you know, go home and do even these seven studies this week, you know, fill in the blanks and we'll come talk about it. But then we just stop and we don't, we don't spend time together. We don't go, hey, how's the marriage? Uh, let me get around your marriage. How are you doing with your kids? How are you doing at work? Are you God's man where you are, right? How are you handling yeah. um, stresses in your life? And so the book learning is really important, okay? But listen to what Paul said. I already quoted him, but I quoted it again. But when he says the things you've learned and received, yep. and then watch this, heard and seen in me, practice yes. these things, Yes. okay? And so make sure, first of all, if you're not teaching sound doctrine, then you are a disciple maker. You're just uh, making the wrong kinds of disciples, and that's mm -hmm. going to be a real problem, okay? Yes. But even if you're teaching sound doctrine, this is where, again, most churches fail. Even with the, the, the shrinking number of churches that are still orthodox, there is even a smaller number of churches that are orthoprax, right? Mm -hmm. Okay? That have straight practice, that are biblically practicing mm -hmm. what the Scripture says we as God's people should be practicing. Men will learn all day long, as long as you don't hold them accountable to doing it. Okay, and that's why that's why James said, "Let us not be merely hearers who delude ourselves, but right. doers of the word." Okay, and then he goes on, and this is a this is a, one of my favorite passages to teach to men is in James chapter one, where he goes on to say, "Don't be like a man." The word there for man is the word for male, not the word for man that's in Colossians one where. I, I proclaim him admonishing every man, every human, right? But but the word for male in James, where it says, don't be like a male who looks in a mirror, okay? Because <laughs> women look in the mirror different than men, right? Mm -hmm. When when women look in the mirror, they're, they're there to do business. Like they bring a tackle box with them, you know? Yeah. And they're going to throw on putty and scrape and color and do everything they can until they like what they see. You know, kind of men, they, they get up in the morning, they kind of scratch their face, you know, they make sure they're street legal and they move on, right? And... Mm -hmm. And, and so I, I would just say that, that it's really important when you look at the mirror of God's word, you stay there and you do business and you conform yourself to it. Wow. Okay, there's a practice wow. That's to good. what we see in the word of God. And if not, all right, then we're honoring God with our lips and our learning, but in reality, our hearts are far from him. And that's a real problem. That's not a disciple. That's a learned man who yeah. knows about God, but doesn't know God. That's good. Okay, closing thought, Rex. What's a closing thought for you? Uh, I think he's. I think Todd hit it right on the head. Is is when you get in the word, do business. Right, I Thomas. Mean, how about you? Yeah, I think what Todd mentioned about we can't lose sight of the, of the fact of what our call is about, and that is to invest in people, okay. and invest in the call that God has on their lives. And to do that, we have to care enough about them to get to know them. Yeah. And to be willing to ask them hard questions and give them give them loving answers, but we need to again make a high priority of just uh, loving and knowing people, knowing men. Mm -hmm. yep. You know, it's a uh, it's all about relationships. I mean, yep. discipleship is relationships. It's finding a relationship with someone who can invest in you. You got to find that person, pursue them, get around them, stay around them, then find someone that you can invest. So that this is a reproducing. It's you're investing in someone because someone's investing in you. And all the while, you're in the Word of God. So, Lord, I pray uh, for us as we uh, pursue you vigorously that we would be uh, portals and not endpoints. Uh, would you help us to be around men who can invest in us, who are a step ahead, who have something to share with us and speak into our life? And would you make sure that we're always around men that we can invest in, that we'd be intentional to follow the model of Jesus and invest and build men. Help us to be builders of men. Amen. So grateful for Todd, grateful for the time together. We trust you for what's ahead now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, thank you, Todd. Thanks, Todd. Brother, God bless thank you. you. And you're Thank you. Thank you.